We're now moving on to a little bit of a different dynamic. And now I would like to welcome Jutta Steiner, co-founder and chief executive officer of Parity Technologies and Manus Carney from Bloomberg. We're now moving into discussing the world of decentralized finance, blockchain, and the growing number of cryptocurrencies that we're hearing about today, and discuss their role in really shaping the future of finance. It's World Government Summit 2021. Welcome to our audience. Joining me now is Jutta Steiner. She is the CEO and founder of Parity Technologies, a little bit more qualified than me. She has a PhD in, economic, in, in mathematics and began her career, at a blockchain career at Ethereum Foundation. She was the original chief security uh, officer there. The theme for the next 10 minutes it's new to me. It's going to be new to many people who are choose, tuning in. Decentralizing finance for an inclusive economy. Yuta, great to have you with me this, today. Um, define for our audience, what is DeFi? Just explain what the acronym is. Why should I care? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question, um, how to define this. Um, and I'm happy to, happy to give a better sense of, of what it is. So... It does go back to like the idea that emerged, I guess, with Bitcoin and then Ethereum um, a few years ago. So that a protocol that is open and can facilitate the transaction of value on the Internet could be the base layer of new ways of doing services online. And the first application that we're seeing now is, is finance. And with DeFi, it's basically the promise that you could have financial applications without the intermediaries that make it slow, inefficient, intransparent, leads to misalignment of incentives, replaced by what is essentially an open protocol that everybody can access, can add new applications to, and, and this is what we call decentralized finance. One big project uh, that's been around for a few years, and, and that's been, I would say, at the origin, and I think it's worth checking it out, is a project called uh, MakerDAO, which was the idea of like how can we, first of all, bring money um, representations of money on 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 these blockchains and then out of this in particular in the last year a bunch of new ideas emerged around like how can we do lending and borrowing um and and do this in an in a way that's safe and secure for the users so safety and security are going to be paramount in a technology world but l let's just define DeFi is a, a democracy of access to finance to those people that might not go to a bank, might not have a bank account. Is that a fair assessment, a democratization of access to finance? That's the, that's the great vision, that it will lead to an, to an even more, um, more fundamental democratization of finance um, that's facilitated through, the, through these protocols and uh, that users can directly access through their phones through applications um, that they host on, on their phones instead of like having to go through all these intermediaries. Like this is the long-term long -term vision um, and having, having better systems that are in particular also governed directly by the users instead of um, intransparent, uh, intransparent mechanisms that are hid behind closed doors. Tell me what happened. We're coming up to an unfortunate anniversary, the, the one year anniversary of, of COVID in the world, as we closed down, technology triumphed. How did COVID in this past 12 months impact the, I suppose, growth of DeFi? I think um, on various levels, I think on a, um, on a human and also like philosophical level, I think people um, realized like that, how, how much we're in need of like more redundancy, um, more direct, um, from the bottom up grown systems that can help us deal in, in difficult situations. And I think that's um, that's that's one realization of people um, that, that turn towards DeFi and looked at this as an interesting promise because it is an open system um, that can be uh, can be used by anyone. And so um, and so I think there was a lot of uncertainty and people just looking for like what, what is alternatives, like given how much we rely on institutions that we often don't are much in control of and and i think that's what was really behind 
the uh, the the interest and um, and adoption we've seen with DeFi. So in many ways, then, if I if I sit outside of this, I go, okay, so this is taking out the banks, this is taking out perhaps the intermediaries that I traditionally would have gone to to access finance. But to scale up DeFi, do I need huge financial institutions to get behind it? Um, I mean that that depends. I would say so. I mean we're seeing we're seeing the uptake right now. I think um, what will depend on on where this all lands is like um, how um, how regulation fits into this. And I hope that governments um, will will help and play play a key role in here. That we find um, good rules that facilitate the safe interaction with these platforms, um, rather than um, as we've seen with other um, implementations of new regulation like say data protection and whatnot. Uh, where this basically led to incumbents gaining more power. Um, and I think it's important to do this in a way where there's enough experimentation for uh, innovative companies that can uh, build interesting services with like many more users in the end um, and, and direct access to these platforms. I put some context around this. I live in the Bloomberg world and we deal with facts, scalability and prove to me that it has value and scalability. So give me some concept of the scale up in, in DeFi. So, I mean, right now, um, just to give you a sense, like uh, the, the size of, um, of collateral and assets that are locked up in DeFi, I think is around 40 billion. So that's the size that we've seen. Um, uh, there have been um, some uh, really interesting um, things happening in the summer with, um, with new protocols emerging. Um, so, I think um, with, with, in particular, um, decentralized exchanges and things like automated market makers, we've seen like very new paradigms um, that, that wouldn't have been possible before um, for frictionless integration. And that will drive down costs massively and lead to um, even more innovation and, and, and direct, um, direct connection of applications that sit on the blockchain. What about security? I join the DeFi uh, platform. I want to access funds. Reassure me. Security is a, is a big concern, um, obviously, for the safe interaction. Um, there is things that we do at the company here um, to, to provide that. So um, there's new um, programming paradigms, for example, with uh, automated, um, automated proving um, that will help with that. So that, that's a deep concern. But I think because it's an open system in like in the long run, um, even though we've seen hacks and whatnot, I think in the long run, it will make it a lot more uh, a lot more secure to hack because everybody can check whether or not and, and what is going on. And to my counterpart, is, it, is that the right way to think of it? My counterparty on the other side? How do I have trust in my counterparty that it's clean money? Yeah. I mean, th that is essentially what, what, what blockchain gives you. Like you don't have to, we sometimes summarize that and it might be it might be hard to unpack. Like it is less trust, more truth um, because it's an open system. Like everybody can check the code. Um, and, and that's a good thing. I mean, we want to trust the system, of course. But <laughs> it's I think not these, are the questions that, these are the questions that people will ask. It's natural before I yeah. engage. How do I do it? There's Where does the trust come from? A lot more, I would argue that there's a lot in the long run. There's actually a lot more, a lot more, a lot less risk in terms of counterparty risk and whatnot because it is a shared. It's it's basically a shared digital commons um, that that we use instead of like having to trust audit reports, for example, that are slow. Like all these things. Like it is directly hard coded um, in in what is deployed on the chain, and so it can be checked at every single moment um, rather than having to. Uh, to wait for these reports, which often also like um, not really clear uh, to, to follow. Yeah. When we talk about regulation, I mean, what is it? The three things that will get you in the end is what death, taxation, and regulation or the compliance mm -hmm. department. Um, so, so, with that in mind, um, who's leading the way with good regulation around DeFi? Yeah, a lot of smaller um, countries are very. Um, a lot more engaging and I think um, uh, trying to uh, trying to understand um, what this is and I think that's important I think the biggest mistake could be to try to to try to directly apply like the paradigms that we have had in the past in terms of regulation to these platforms um, because they do work differently um, and so 
as I said, like this could slow down the innovation and drive in particular the entrepreneurs away from these countries. Like we're seeing a lot of like people actually moving to these places that are, um, and I wouldn't call it like regulatory friendly, that's not what I mean. I would call it like where, where there is a lot of interaction and positive interaction with the regulators, regulators really trying to understand what it is and like how we can how we can work constructively together as entrepreneurs and regulators to come up with the right frameworks. Here. I mean, listening to you, you actually come alive talking about this. What What is the most exciting thing that you think is going to evolve out, out of DeFi? Where, where can this go to? We, we A lot of people decry Bitcoin five years ago and still do. Yeah. So make it come alive for me over the next five years. What can it do? <laughs> I mean, it's hard, it's hard to predict the future, but I mean, I've said that many times, like having gone through the having gone through this pandemic like i'm grateful that we do now have um alternatives um that are um alternatives to like big monolithic um institutional services um and i hope like that in the next few years we further explore these, these possibilities of the technology to make this a stronger much more open system for everyone i mean i'm a bit tired of this oh this will serve the unbanked and whatnot i mean i'm, I'm sure it will it will benefit a lot of people but like it's it's really the important thing is that this is an open... So an take open me platform. beyond the unbanked. If you say, I'm tired listening to this, oh, save the unbanked. It's always the same. It's always, no, no, I mean, it's a part, This I, is your I, opportunity. This is the closing opportunity to really scale up the vision for D5. So give it to us. Totally. totally. I mean, I'm, I I think what we're going to see, like DeFi is just the very first application of blockchain, really. I think that's the that's the key takeaway, actually. We're going to see other other platforms and other, other, um, other services also emerge on these um, on these systems um, that aren't uh, facilitated by intermediaries. Like my hope it is that it will also help um, overcome like all these monolithic services that these days like the Googles um, provide. Like there's a lot to unpack here, um, which will hopefully lead to the empowerment um, empowerment of people um, that and, and better 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 a lot better more reliable transparent and secure uh, digital economies basically. Yuta, fantastic to have you with me uh, to discuss this. Uh, I look forward to speaking to you again and the evolution uh, of this thank blockchain you. technology. World Government Summit 2021, we thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Yuta and Manis, for really breaking down the concepts of decentralized finance and what it really means for the future of finance.